So I'm just supposed to shove this thing in my pants? I went looking for the weirdest backpacking gear I could find. This is just stupid ultralight. And what I found is backpackers are obsessed with trekking poles, among other things. Is that a freeze dried meal in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? So let's check it out. It's a freeze dried meal. I don't know what it is about trekking poles, but I feel like we need to stop trying to make them into everything else. I mean, we got tents, chairs, trailers, and now flashlights. Why can't trekking poles just be trekking poles? Sometimes it just feels like multi-use has gone too far, but I guess if you're going to combine trekking poles with something else, a flashlight makes the most sense, except the manufacturer specifically warned me these are not to be used for walking at night, which Makes me think, well then, what's the purpose? But that's probably just lawyers talking. So if you wanna hike at night, I guess that's up to you, but you do so at your own risk. As for me, I don't know how much night hiking I'm gonna be doing, but I did think that these would be great as lights inside of a trekking pole tent. Okay, I admit, in this situation, these trekking pole lights are pretty nice. I mean, Look at how much light I've got in here. Like it's nice and kind of cozy feeling, you know? I mean, there's like a nice little ambiance going on. They're pretty nice. Especially in winter when you have long periods of time in the dark. These would make for some really great ambient light. Now, flashlights are one thing, but what about a trekking pole that is also a water filter? This is Pure Trek, a trekking pole with a pump style water filter built into the shaft. Now. This thing is weird, but I do see the benefit in it, especially for older hikers who are finding it harder and harder to bend over, kneel, or squat to filter water. But even if you have no problem with any of those activities, I still see some pros, only because I don't know what it is, but once I have my pack on and I'm in hiking mode, I hate taking it off. And with Pure Trek, it's completely possible to stop, filter water without ever taking off your pack. And I could find some real benefits to that. Now, the only con I see is this thing is a little heavier than your standard trekking pole at almost 21 ounces. I've got sleeping bags that weigh less than that. In comparison, a regular trekking pole weighs something like half that. Now, I don't know what the long-term effects of hiking with one heavy and one lighter trekking pole, but other than that, if you don't like taking off your pack or bending over to filter water, I could find this a really useful piece of gear. What's not as useful is this strange little sleeping pad. This is the Climate Inertia X-Frame, and it's part of the long history of climate's inadequate R values. The idea here is that you place the X-Frame either under or even inside your sleeping bag, and these big gaps allow the bag to loft in between, uh, eliminating the need for insulation inside the pad itself, which is great in theory, but you may be wondering, how do you sleep on this? Thing? All right, let me just shimmy myself underneath this tripod for your entertainment. All right, the question is, could I actually sleep on this thing? Let me get this stick out of here. Well, it's supposedly mapped to your body in such a way that it supports you exactly where you need it and nowhere that you don't, allowing you to basically hover off the ground. Now, it's been a while since I've actually slept on this thing. I've actually had this for a long time, and I'm not even sure they make it anymore, although you can still find it on Amazon. But my recollection is you have to sleep almost perfectly on your back. But I don't like sleeping on my back. And it doesn't even save you all that much weight. The X-Frame comes in at over 10 ounces as opposed to the Thermarest Uber Light, the lightest sleeping pad on the market, which is only eight ounces, and it's a full-size sleeping pad without any holes in it. Well, except for maybe the ones you put in it yourself. But the weirdest piece of gear that I've seen in a really long time is the Gossamer Gear Crotch Pot. This is ultra light gone wild. The idea here is that you clip these little carabiners to your belt loops, you place an uncooked meal inside the pouch, and then you put the whole thing inside your pants and allow the heat from your body to cook the meal as you hike. Okay, so I haven't gone very far with the crotch cooker just yet, but I can already tell that it's gonna ride okay down there. I mean, <laughs> I am used to having large things. I'm gonna have to try really hard not to make just a whole bunch of perverted jokes about this thing. It seems to be doing okay, it's riding okay. I can definitely tell that there's something else down there, but it's not bothering me just yet. The idea is a compromise between cold soaking and an actual proper stove and cook set. If you don't know, there are some people who choose to rehydrate their meals by soaking them in cold water, sacrificing the convenience and enjoyment of a warm meal for a lighter weight. 
This way you at least get a warm-ish meal using the heat of your body. Okay, this beef stroganoff's been cooking for a little more than three hours. The noodles look soft. It looks disgusting, but normally you don't have a clear bag that you're seeing it through. It smells awful. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Cooked with my crotch. I don't even know what to say. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. Normally I really like beef stroganoff when it's hot, but apparently I'm not hot enough. I think I'm gonna stop eating it now. Now, I'm not a cold soaker, nor will I ever be one. And in my opinion, this isn't really that much better. A stove, some gas, and a cook set really doesn't take up that much weight, and it makes meals 100 times better. You know what makes this so much better? That I didn't cook it with my crotch. Remember, backpacking doesn't mean you have to be miserable, so go out there and actually enjoy yourself. That's all I've got for weird backpacking gear, but for even more weird camping gear, check out this video right here. This is the third weird gear video I've done. If you enjoy these videos, drop me a comment below asking for more. And if you know about any weird gear that I should check out, please drop me a comment. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching.